On today's video, we're going to talk about shocks and springs and ride heights for stock cars. Uh, all classes, we're going to cover them all. So we'll cover that when we come back. Hey, on this video, we're going to talk about springs, ride heights, and shock valving for a stock car, whether it's IMCA or USRA or Wasoda. Uh, we're all kind of dealing with the same metric style uh, car with a metric lower control arm. So before we get started, like, subscribe, ring that bell, comment on these videos. Uh, tell us what you think. Uh, if you got advice and you want to help out, comment because I'm here to help you and you're here to help them. So if we can all help each other. We can learn at a faster rate and we can all be faster. Okay, this video, we're going to cover each corner of the car. And we're going to start with ride heights. IMCA has uh, implemented a new rule this year for ride heights, which is a seven inch minimum in the front and a nine inch maximum in the rear. And those measurements are taken out at the frame kick out at the oval holes. Uh, they're both in the front and the rear. And it's not really, well, it's, it's part of what's changed my thinking about height in the front of the car. So for a lot of people, they weren't far off. For a lot of people working with me, we were on kind of a standard ride height deal. We didn't squat the car. Uh, I personally did not like how those cars look on the racetrack. Uh, and I am very happy that IMCA did implement the rule for multiple reasons. I know it sucks because it changed the way you was doing things and it's making it a little harder, but we've already had cars out and very successful at the first of the season on the new rules. So uh, I don't think it's going to be that dramatic. Um, you know, we're coming up on our third week of testing. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be that dramatic for people. So we'll get started. So ride heights, you know, last year, you know, we might put a 1,200-pound spring in and lower the ride height down. But the spring was big enough to keep the car off the racetrack. So, you know, a guy said, yeah, I'm on a 1,200-pound spring. It's a lot of spring, but the rate in which he was in that 1,200 was less than if he would have been sitting at ride height. Now we're sitting at ride height, 7-inch <clears throat> frame measurement. Uh, excuse me. Uh, seven inch minimum frame measurement uh, in the front. Okay. And we're going to go into this deal with uh, on the right front. We're going to start on the right front. And we're going to go into this deal with a, a 950 to 1,000 pound spring. Okay. We can go lower. We could be 800. There's problems with an 800 pound springs that we don't run into with the 1,000. The pro one of the problems with an 800-pound spring is the speed in which it travels, okay? If we're on an 800-pound spring and the 7-inch ride height, we're going to have to be screwed into that spring, and we're probably going to have to be higher than the 7-inch to keep the car off the racetrack. And everybody's okay with that because we're going to race into it, and we're not going to be at that height when we're racing, and we're only going to be at that height when we're sitting, and there's all these things that we say. OK, and there's very few things that we know, but um, the life of a spring at 800 pounds in a stock car could be um, minimal. So if you're going to run a softer spring in the front of a stock car, be prepared to run to have a lot of springs. So that spring's not going to last you all year. And if it does. And, and, you know, you come at the end of the year and you go, ah, I told you it last all year. You gave up. You gave up a lot of performance in that car throughout the year running that spring. So is everybody going to agree? No. No, they're not. Because last year I had a guy come in to the trailer at um, Wheatland looking for a 450. And I was like, I don't even know if anybody makes a 450 in a five and a half inch spring. And apparently they do because he said he had one. Um, and that's not really the route. You know, that's not the rabbit hole we're going down. So 
Yeah, okay. we're not going down that rabbit hole. So understand that, that uh, we're going to put a little spring in the car. If you want to be on our shock program, but you want to be on a 650, 800 pound spring, I will help you do that. I have no problems with helping you fulfill your desires, but I'm telling you, it's going to make our program a little difficult. Okay. So the right front 950 to a thousand pound spring is going to take what we build. I'm not talking about everybody else, but what we build. It's going to take a right front GF 500 to a right front GF 700 to control these spring rates. Okay. Get the car down on the nose, get the car turned to the corner. Um, so right front, that's the right front. So what we'll do is we'll cover each corner based on um, spring rate and shock valving. And these are not the only shock valvings that are available for the right front. Okay, This is going to be kind of the range that we're probably going to suggest to be in. Okay, But it's not the only thing that's out there or being done. Left front, we're going to be in 1,050 to 1,150 spring rate. <clears throat> left front shock is and setting at right height. Left front shock is going to range from a left front 1 75 to a left front GF 300 with the 75 or the 100 maybe being um, some of the options that we see first. Okay, so when it comes to left front rebound. People tend to drag their feet a little bit. They seem to be a little slower at wanting to get there uh, than, say, the counterpart on the right front. But the left front rebound does turn the car a little bit better, or I feel like it's very highly needed in the car to make the car finish the corner. Uh, do we finish the corners well? Not as good as we should because there's guys that are there to winning that are probably finishing the corner better, okay? <clears throat> right rear. Excuse me. Oh, been on the phone a lot today. Throat's a little raw. The right rear. The right rear, we're going to be on a 13-inch spring, okay? We're going to be on either a 225, a 250, Possibly a 275, 300. Okay. So we're going to start basically on a 225, 250, one of them two springs, or we're going to be on our 230, 250 spring. Uh, depends on what car, what brand of car win, how well the car rotates, uh, how well it transfers the load, how much moisture is on the racetrack, uh, what we need to keep. The spring rate has been growing and it just continues to grow. So we're going to be working on that uh, more throughout the season. Right now, we're going to start out on a 225.13 or the 230.250 spring that we build. It's also in a 13-inch shocks. We're going to start out on a right rear 1-40. Um, uh, you need to understand the call-outs on these. Uh, they're on our websites. Uh, I'm going to do a video on that also, but understand the call-outs. Right rear 1-40. It's a really good shock for the right rear. In the slick, we increase it to a right rear 1-50. In most cases, like the left front, right front, going up 10 pounds on that number is not enough on them corners. On the right rear, it starts to show a, a major difference. Uh, have we explored the right rear as much as we need to? No. So um, we don't need to go crazy. But we do need to keep that in mind, and we need to build on the right rear. Right rear is really important corner, and we're lacking weight transfer to the right rear and load and keeping the load there. Uh, on a stock car, I would probably keep the load around 500. On the fronts, we talked about right heights. Okay, you want to load stick them fronts, get them right heights set, get the load stick out, get the load stick number this is for your car, okay? This is how we build data. Then on the front, establish your travels. How much is my front traveling? 
where is it at? You can't do it. You need to buy a travel indicator. They're on our website. Look them up. It's 20 dash 72 I believe. Uh, I'll put a link below to them so you can go see them. Put a travel indicator on there. Know what your travels are. Quit guessing. Quit going. Someone took a picture. I put a GoPro back in 1953 on a car. Quit doing that. Let's know where we're at today on these springs of that race. Okay? On the right rear, uh, on the stock car, our load numbers are going to be some from 450 to 500 pounds um, on that 225 spring. So we need to be in there. We're measuring them with the tape measure. Uh, of course, again, I covered the shocks. Uh, things that, that, that we're doing some things to make the shock a little bit better over there. Uh, we're going to cover our options here real quickly um, as far as making more grip out of the shocks, okay? So the left rear, the left rear spring, um, I believe IMCA will not allow us to have a chain. So without the chain, when you're doing preload without the chain, it may not be the same every lap because we may not hit those numbers we need to hit, okay, because we're not against the end of the chain. When we're against the end of the chain, we know for a fact that we went to them numbers, okay? So 125.16, preloaded, extended load, 175 if you're on bike. Um, if you need more forward drive, then put a 200. Those are 16 inch springs. The left rear shock is going to, the left rear shock is going to be massive. Okay. Massive amounts of options, but we're going to range from a left rear one, 4,400 SRT and left rear one, 75, 550 SRT. Okay. That is in itself a pretty big range of shock valving. Uh, our extended load is going to be set from 185 to 250, probably until we uh, know the car better. Probably going to start around 185, see how tight our car is, see how well the car turns. Um, that's one of the things I didn't cover very well in the spring video that I will hear. Your left rear can be anything you want it to be, and you can just keep adding drive to it but it doesn't make your car turn better. It may make your car come off the corner like a rocket ship, but you're going to get beat doing it. Okay. Uh, there are racetracks around the country that specifically need a lot of drive, uh, but not as many as, as, as we race. We race like all of them need it. Okay. Most every track that we come up against needs some momentum in it. Um, but it needs enough left rear that we keep pushing the car forward. And we want to push the car forward to its maximum capacity, to its ability to turn. So once you exceed the car's ability to turn on the front, quit adding drive to the car. Okay, If you're already over that ability, take drive away from the car. Because the car is not going to get better unless you make it turn better or have less drive. Okay, So it's very hard for, you, for guys to take drive out of their cars. They don't like that. Um, they don't like that. They want to have all this drive. If we can't turn it, drive's not helping. So our options for our shocks and making more grip are going to be SRT, base valve, or Elite. And Elite is base valve SRT together. Okay. And before we cover them, we have sold shock packages in the past where we do 325s and a 20 series left rear. And we did the 20 series left rear because we liked the one piece body that the 20 series gave us. Okay, we liked the gas volume that that shock gave us because it is not a three piece body and didn't have a connector ring. So we have a one piece body now for a 25 series. So it allows us to do the gas pressure as needed. It doesn't get us in trouble with another IMCA rule that says the shock has to compress all the way. So with the connector ring in there, it was running this very tight on um, it was running this very tight on um, room, and sometimes it runs us out of room. So uh, I feel like we've got that uh, issue solved. So base valve SRT Elite. So we'll start with the SRT. 
we are probably going to put an SRT in the left rear. Okay. As our left rears get stiffer and stiffer, and we try to do transition holes, we need something to help us get that car through the hole. So if the shock is stiff, then the, really the options is to put it back onto the car. So you see the car kind of buck and the tires doing this and our traction is coming away from the, uh, from the ground. So when we put the SRT in, it's a separate valve in the piston that allows fluid to flow through that instead of through the shim stack. And this allows the car to get through the holes better. Okay, that allows us to make better grip. We can get back to the track quicker. We go forward quicker. The SRT is very good. And the SRT in all four corners gets even better. Now, we don't always do that because of price. The SRT increases the price. Um, the standard shock is $325. SRT increases the price by fifty dollars, um, so it's a pricing grade. It's three seventy five. Um, it's worth it's worth the investment. It's very much worth the investment. Um, makes a very good piece. Um, so I do recommend it. And, and like I said, it allows the, the tire to stay to the track more than anything I feel like is going on in the market. Okay, the base valve. Base valve is a fixed valve. It's inside the tube, um, and it doesn't move. The main piston moves up and down, but the base valve is fixed. And in the compression stroke, it gives the oil column something to push against. So the oil column's going up there, hitting the base valve, and the base valve's making oil go through the main piston, and this is allowing for better functionality of the main piston. By doing that, we get more feel in the car. We get more grip at the tire also. So everybody always says, we get to lower our gas pressure. We get to lower our rod force. This is also a benefit. Uh, I feel like it's a lesser benefit. It's the one mostly talked about. But when a base valve functions properly, it allows the car to get in the rough better, through the rough better, because there's not that leg that's being created by the oil column being moved. So when we decrease that leg, we increase our traction, we increase our feel. Okay, so the car just is better. It makes the piston work better. It makes the tire work better. So the base valve SRT combination is allowing the tire to get through the rough. Why the base valve is allowing the piston to make feel. So when we push that oil column, no traction. Uh, when we're bouncing that tire through that hole, no traction. Uh, the base valve is 385. The Elite is 435. So those are our options. You can buy a 25 series with an SRT, with a base valve, or both. We call it an Elite. Okay. So shock options. <clears throat> We're going to do options. I'm going to give you four options for valving. These are 25 series shocks. Okay. We can do some of this stuff in a cheaper shock. Okay, we may not be able to do all the options that we need to do. Right now, what we're talking about here is making the best car we can make with spring rates and load numbers and valving options and shock options, okay? So option number one, low turn. Low turn is gonna be a right front one 100 backslash 130 okay the 100 is the rebound side that is um, indicated by the 100 the one is a uh, bleed system the 100 is the dyno number and the backslash separates rebound from compression the 130 is a 10 inch number um, this information is all on our website if you need to uh, gain more bsbgofast.com if you need more information about this, go there and read it. Okay, the left front one dash 50, backslash 160, right rear 140, backslash 110, and the left rear 4400 SRT. It's not a big left rear because we don't have a big right front. Okay, option two will be a medium turn. Will be a right front 300, 
backslash 130, a left front 1 75 backslash 160, a right rear 1 40 backslash 110, and a left rear 40 backslash 450 SRT. So that's uh, option two. Option three, which is going to be kind of the standard medium to high, this is more of a standard package. Option three, it's going to be a right front GF 500 backslash 130, left front 1 dash 100 backslash 160, right rear 1 dash 40 backslash 110, and the left rear 1 dash 75 550 SRT. So now we're kind of loading up the left rear a little harder. We've got the right front turning. These options all need to run true on the same spring package, okay? Which means that we're going to make that spring package turn better and better and better, okay? There is no sense in picking option one and going down to, a, you know, a 700-pound spring, okay? That doesn't really make sense. It causes too many problems. It's going to cause trouble in the system, okay? So we need to have good spring rate in the car. Spring rate that'll last us throughout the season. Spring rate that'll keep us off the racetrack. Spring rate that'll make us legal on our ride heights. Okay. And then we need to valve it up so we can control those springs, uh, control that load that that's being made in the height of the car. Okay. Option four, it's going to be a high turn option. And it's going to be a right front GF 600, a left front G GF. 300 backslash 160, a right rear 1 dash 40 backslash 110, and a left rear 1 dash 75 550 SRT. Okay, those are our four options option one, two, three, and four. Each option has a, a various rate of turn in the car. Still going to go back to these same spring rates. Okay, um, as you add options like SRT and base valve, this doesn't increase your ability to uh, turn the car. It may make the valving better and it may make the feel better. Okay. And yeah, it may make the valving a little better, but it's not like adding a base valve is going to give a car like a ton of turn versus not. Okay. But it is going to change the way the car feels to the driver. And this is very important. And you can get feel for the driver, and you can get traction that makes feel for the driver. And the base valve SRT, they will both do that. The SRT may make a little more traction, and the base valve may make a little more feel. And sometimes when the valving screwed up, you can fix the valving, and it'll make more feel. Okay? So um, shocks, springs, options, valving. Valving options, uh, stock cars, IMCA, USRA. The main difference there to me is the tire, okay? The car is going to rotate better on a better tire. So let's say we go over and we get us some UMP tires and we put on the car. Well, our car is going to rotate better at the same posture, same height. That's why softening tires work. That's what the whole, you know, disgruntled tire softening episodes about. It gives the car a better grip, just like moisture gives the car a better grip. Um, but the difference between them cars, because we're talking metric, uh, you are allowed to cheat or you don't have a ride height rule, I don't believe, in USRA. If I tell you anything about the rules, you need to go check, okay? Don't ever take it as the gospel. Go check. Make sure that I am telling you the correct things. Um, but the biggest difference is going to be entire metric frame, metric lowers. Uh, there are some cheater stuff out there. We're not talking about that. We're talking about what we're supposed to be racing on. Uh, so spring rates, um, shocks, shock valvings. If you need any help, give us a call. Uh, 620-3200. Uh, is our phone number. 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. We're off for an hour at lunch, bsbgofast.com. Text me on Facebook, message me on Facebook. Share, comment, like our videos, people. Help us to grow this thing. I hope this helps, okay? 
um, let's have a dialogue because I want to keep making videos. I want to keep having good ideas. I want to have good content. I don't want to have content. I want to have good content. Okay. So as always, go left, go fast. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.